Hi everyone, this is Duncan from the podcast Under the Stairs. This particular video you're checking out just now has the archival recording attached to it. The archival recording is from our podography, I think that's the term that we use, um, and it will feature reviews of movies that fall under the 88 Films Italian Collection series. Now, the vast majority of reviews we've done over the last five years have been in audio format and published on our RSS feed for the podcast. We are transitioning over to give you access to all those reviews right here on YouTube under a playlist. Now, we're doing that because we're about to do our first video recording of E88 Films Italian collection release, that being Tentacles. So there's plenty of opportunity to delve into the back catalogue of the reviews here. And if you like what you hear, then please hit subscribe on the channel, leave your comments below, and uh, check out the rich catalogue of over 1,200 episodes we have on podcasts under the stairs on any podcatching device or Spotify that you use. So stick around, enjoy the episode, and I'll speak to you very soon. One week of non-stop partying guarantees the flow only brain tells you when you remember your name. Oh, wow! Every one of these years, by sunrise, Easter morning, one time the whole school you're a bender. Welcome to spring break, the annual migration of the idiots. Hey, biker parking only. Get a grip. Chill out. Look, we don't want any trouble, all right? Edward Diablo Santor, the state stands ready to execute you as charged. Do you have any last words? May the Lord have mercy on you. Drunk breakers. Thinking it's a fun trick. Sick the office biker buddies. He vowed he was coming back. an officer with a deadly weapon. That's cause to blow your fucking pretty head off. Who killed my friend? Who? Welcome back. So you've just heard the trailer for disc number 44 of the 88 Films Italian Collection series. This is Nightmare Beach. Oh, that is right. Nightmare Beach from a little year that was 1988-89, depending on where you were. It was made in 1988. According to the 88 Films website, it says, The late great Umberto Lenzi gave audiences some of the most notorious video nasties, including his legendary gut crunchers, The Man from Deep River and Cannibal Ferox. However, the maestro of macabre, nightmare-making images, was rightly most proud of his giallo classics. Most famously represented by the colourful intrigue of Spasmo from 1974, the gruelling gore of Eyeball from 1975. 
for Nightmare Beach, which is not a Jello, by the way, regardless of this this introduction on their site. Uh, for Nightmare Beach, released in 1988, Lindsay would claim that a troubled production process meant he took a backseat role, although it is difficult not to notice his blood-splashed paw print all over this terrifying tale of a madman in a motorcycle helmet who is taking out drunk and delicious young co-eds all over the sparkling sands of South Florida. As a body count creeps up, Miami detective John Saxon of Nightmare on Elm Street frame tries to keep ahead of the curve in this carnage-packed late-day Lindsay gem that is now getting a belated British bow for hungry horror addicts and completists of Italian trash terror. The special features on this disc is a 2018 2K scan from the original camera negative, a high definition Blu-ray 1080p presentation, uncompressed original English audio, uncompressed alternative Italian audio, optional English subtitles, Nightmare Rock, an interview with composer Claudio Simonetti, an alternative 1331 open map presentation of the film, the theatrical trailer, the reverse sleeve with alternative welcome to spring break cover, and the technical specs on the disc is it's region locked to region B, the audio is LPCM stereo, the picture is 1080p HD 1781, the runtime is an hour and a half, the languages are both English and Italian with English subtitles. So what's really interesting about this is the fact that they're leaning towards John Saxon being the big name in this one. Truth be told, when I sat down and watched, I didn't realise Michael Parks was in this. So that kind of threw me. I was like, who is this Michael Parks lookalike rip-off dude? Um, only to realise about halfway through it, it was actually Michael Parks himself before he would go off and start doing a ton of Tarantino stuff and get the, the acclaim that an actor of his calibre who was in so many great movies throughout the 70s uh, really demanded. I, f- I feel personally, that's just my thoughts on it. Uh, Nightmare Beach is certainly not a giallo, regardless what that intro kind of leads you to believe. Um, I don't even think we could comfortably say it's anything other than a slasher. It, to me, would have been perfect placed in the slasher classics collection because I actually think, compared to some of those slashers that I've been covering, this one is miles better. That being said, it does come with a bit of baggage and some issues which we will cover very shortly. The movie itself involves the death of a serial killer at the start. It's interesting we're going to be talking about the first power in about a week's time because this is kind of preempting a lot of these 90s movies that I was just kind of poking fun at before the first break. Um, but yeah, so we have a, a killer on death row who venges to strike back beyond the grave. He's part of a motorcycle gang and we then jump kind of post his execution at spring break time. The teenagers are all down there, they're getting rowdy uh, and very drunk and kind of um, uh, full of full of cheer and beer um, down on the beaches, enjoying themselves and uh, their deaths start to happen at the hands of a motorcycle helmet wearing bike driving serial killer who has a bike which has special buttons on it which means that if you are on the bike and touching certain parts you're electrocuted to death. He has a real kind of love of electricity in this movie. I can only assume that the production staff had seen Shocker at this point and this had made its way into some sort of influence. It's my only idea behind some of the bizarre choices of killing implementations. Obviously, the police are investigating it. Our, our detective, our main detective here is John Saxon, who was the guy that caught the previous serial killer. And he starts to think that maybe something's going on here. We've also got a touch of Jaws in that the town is aware that the deaths are creeping up. And when I say the town, I mean like the mayor, the chief of police and stuff. And they are trying to, with the help of the coroner, of all people, kind of hide the deaths. So people will continue partying on Spring Beach, so uh, Spring Break d- down on the, the beach. So you've got a kind of weird combination of Shocker meets um, meets Jaws minus the shark with a bike. Um, and the movie has some really cool elements about it. Where this movie shines is mostly due to the deaths. The deaths are really quite fun, quite inventive. When they're not using the, the precursor to CGI, 
they're quite cool, quite vicious as well, and they're paced fairly well. Moody's about an hour and a half long, and you get enough of a body count spaced out roughly every 15 minutes you're getting a death, which is kind of cool. The effects, surprisingly well done as well, whether it's an eye gouge or a post electrocution charred body those are really cool as well the sim track is fun it's kind of cock rock 80s style um done by artists you've probably never heard of before but you don't need to uh, the women are smoking the men are horny um but where the movie kind of falls for me is that it's a bit cliched by this point this is italy doing their spin on a genre which by this point in America was already tired so they're not really bringing anything new plus they're not really bringing any of that Italian flair that you want to see the cinematography is a bit basic which hurts me to see especially when we're talking about Lindsay uh, we get a couple of those camera close-ups but nowhere near as much as you would expect from from Lindsay and it doesn't surprise me that he says he takes a back seat in this production because it doesn't feel much like a Lindsay movie overall. Um, and that description from AT Films, they mentioned things like Eyeball and Spasmo, two wonderfully constructed jelly. And then you look at this one and it just feels a bit sterile, a bit a bit safe, um, albeit incredibly absurd when it comes to the, the movie's premise itself. It gets a bit repetitive, which unfortunately doesn't do it a, a great amount of of uh, of credit. It gets to the point where you're just kind of going through the motions. Some of the stereotypes are cringy, even by slasher standards. Specifically, the bike gang and some of the the, the kind of horny teen characters as well are are not brilliant. Uh, the mystery itself is a who gives a fuck, to be honest with you. Um, although I will say the reveal of who the killer is is kind of cool. I, I did like that. Although it doesn't explain how this person would have access to a killer bike and some of the strength and power that you need to complete the murders in the way he has throughout this. That felt a bit kind of ludicrous and in a lot of respects makes it kind of Jalo-esque. In, in some facets. What I will say about Nightmare Beach is that it's one of these movies that comes at a time period where, you know, at this point we're already getting movies like Stage Fright Aquarius. We're, we're just shy of the, the kind of late day Fulci stuff as well, which isn't wholly interesting, but, but not bad nonetheless. We're about a year after uh, Argento's opera, which, like I say, I'm going to be discussing tomorrow, and you'll hear the difference in comparison when it comes to talking about things like cinematography and setup. So we're a bit kind of removed from that side of things, and it shows it shows painfully in a way where the movie feels less Italian and more American than anything else. Uh, I know why it's under this kind of banner for this collection, but this is probably one of those ones where we could have leaned towards the slasher classics and slid that one there to give me at least something to be happy about reviewing. Um, but I can see why we've done things the way we've done them. The interview with Claudio Simonetti on the special features is kind of cool. Um, I tried watching some of the 133 one map presentation of the film. To be honest, it wasn't my bag, so I kind of got rid of that. And is, is it one that for completionists you need to see? I don't know. That's the weird thing about it. Having watched it, I had a ball when watching it, but I was aware that certain bits were getting a bit tiresome and overall it didn't feel like a, a great full movie. It felt like there were lots of parts that I really enjoyed, but as a whole movie itself, it didn't really kind of lend itself to the calibre that this collection thus far has put out. That being said... You know, if you went through your entire life having never seen Nightmare Beach, then I wouldn't say this is one that I would recommend that you go out to be a completionist of Lindsay. Lindsay has plenty of movies pre 
nightmare beats that are woefully underseen and worth your time and really display the incredible work that guy actually did. I know he sometimes gets lev- levied as a bit of a, a, a genre hack, a guy who was quite happy taking other people's ideas and basically remaking the same movies over and over again. I don't think that does credit to him. I think there is his Giallo stuff is particularly great. Some of his Cannibal stuff is wonderfully bonkers, even though he's the guy that's credited as starting the genre. He sometimes gets tarred with that. Uh, well, he, he just copied... Uh, Cannibal Holocaust and Ferox which he did clearly did but you forget that the man was out there really kind of sparking everything off of Man from Deep River I think you should go back and check some of those before Nightmare Beach is you know a, a conversation if you have got quite far into his body of work then by all means you should be checking this one out if you're following through the collection I don't need to tell you you're going to watch this movie anyway if you're watching along with me you probably already watched it so you know It'll be interesting to see if there's much divergence in opinion from what I came in on this one. I felt that I had a lot of interest in parts, but as an overall movie, it just lacked some of that some of that finesse that Lindsay can actually give to a project. Overall, Nightmare Beach gets a 3.5 out of 5 for me. It's somewhere between light and really light. I don't think this will ever go up in my estimations. I think if I watch it again, it's probably going to end up being a 3. But there were certain elements that I did really enjoy. It, it didn't fly in as quick as I thought it was going to, even though the kills are spaced quite well. And overall... You know, I, I kind of feel like part of me wants to see what the, the overall Lindsay project would have been like, how different it would have been, like the ludicrousness of the kills in certain parts with a more deft hand, I think could have been a bit more interesting. But that's just my views on that. So there we go, Nightmare Beach, a 3.5 out of 5 for this movie. Still scoring high for the Italian collection series for sure.